I guess Slappy's telekinetic now. Okay, so, look. <clears throat> despite the fact that I don't do reviews of the Goosebumps books anymore, and despite the fact that I reviewed the trailer for this movie, and even though I just used still images from the trailer, and not any video, and that's totally fucking fair use, Sony flagged my review of the trailer of this movie uh, for copyright. It's still up. Not that I was going to make ad revenue anyway and off of it. Uh, but fuck Sony. Fuck you, Sony. Anyway, I decided to go ahead and see Goosebumps 2 Haunted Halloween since I had the night free and Movie Pass was covering it tonight. <laughs> so I went to see Goosebumps 2 Haunted Halloween. And again, Slappy Halloween would have been a much more clever and pun-filled title and much more Arl Stein uh, worthy, but okay, Haunted Halloween. So, a uh, movie takes place, I think a year, maybe a little bit more since the last movie. Uh, it takes place in a completely different town, a uh, town in upstate New York, I think, instead of Delaware from the first movie. Uh, it's supposedly the town that Nikola Tesla because he's part of this, um, did his first, like, Tesla Tower, but it was not successful. I have no idea how accurate that is. I don't know enough about, I'm not a big Tesla geek, uh, so I don't know if that's true or made up for the movie, but sure. Uh, this also happens to be, I guess, one of the early hometowns of the fictitious R.L. Stein, played by Jack Black. Let's get that out of the way right now. Um, Jack Black does the voice of Slappy in this movie, and Jack Black actually does appear on camera as R.L. Stein. Considering there wasn't any footage of him as Jack Black in any of the pre-release stuff that I saw, uh, there was a question as to whether he was in the movie, or whether he was too busy filming the other Goosebumps-like movie, The House with a Clock in Its Walls, uh, or busy doing the new Tenacious D album to be in this, but he is in it for a little bit in the third act. So anyway... Apparently, the R.L. Stein of this universe was also in this town at some point. Uh, so you basically have three main kid characters. You have um, the kid from uh, It, who played uh, Ben. Uh, you have this other kid. I don't remember any of these characters' names. I don't care. You can Google them. And then you have the, the kid from It's older blonde sister there. Um, blonde sister uh, is a high school senior and is writing her or is attempting to write her college admissions essay to get into Columbia for the creative writing program, but she has writer's block on her very simple essay prompt. Sure. Okay. Uh, her boyfriend, I guess. Um, he, like, comes in through a window, as they always do in movies like this, and he gets caught, whatever, he invites her to a party that she can't go because she has to watch her younger brother, and then she goes anyway and catches the guy kissing, and then the... It, that all of this subplot with this girl and her boyfriend, the boyfriend thing is only in there for basically a first act comeuppance to happen when Slappy knocks him off a ladder. So there's no real point to that that uh, subplot. But the girl is still in it. So anyway, that her basic plot is that she just wants to get into college and this this kind of thing. Uh, the two boys, uh, the the one who's not from it, uh, wants them to do like a junk salvage kids thing. Uh, both of these kids, they seem to be in high school with her, or maybe middle school. They're like 12 or 13. I mean, let's assume 12. That's the average Goosebumps protagonist. Um, so they're doing that, and he wants to be like this junk salvaging thing, where they go and they salvage people's junk and toss it away, and they just keep whatever's not junk for themselves to sell, because they're looking for treasure. That, that, that actually does seem rather Arl Steiny. That is something stupid Arl Stein would have put in a Goosebumps book. So, uh, sure. And, um, they get a call on the phone from some random woman, movie doesn't explain this ever, doesn't come up, uh, to clean out this house, which is this old boarded up house, um, and it happens to be Arl Stein's old house, I guess. Anyway, they're salvaging through this house, blah blah blah, uh, taxidermy cat, okay, uh, we, we all know from the Goosebumps books that Stein doesn't like cats, so I guess that was maybe a, a toss into him. Uh, 
It's like a hidden switch behind a fireplace and they find a trunk. Inside the trunk is a locked book. And this locked book is apparently a very early work by R.L. Stein that was unfinished and unpublished called Haunted Halloween. And anyway, so the two kids, um, they open the book, nothing really happens, they like turn away and they turn back and then Slappy just appears. He has the, he does have the card in his thing where they have to read this, the incantation to bring him back. I don't think that was part of the first movie, but I've only seen the first movie once when it first came out like two years ago, so forgive me if I've forgotten this. And then, a lot of the first act of the movie, nothing much happens except that Slappy wants to be these kids' friends. So, and also, he seems to have the powers of telekinesis and teleportation now, which I guess, which I don't remember him having in any of the books. Now, sure, we can kind of explain this away by saying, okay, this was an early unfinished manuscript of R.L. Stein, so maybe Slappy was given powers that he didn't carry over later, so this is specifically an early version of Slappy, and maybe not the same Slappy from the first movie? Maybe? Um, but that's kind of a stretch anyway. So, uh, but for the first act, Slappy just kind of, like, wants to be these guys, like, brother or friend. So he, like, helps them with a bully by keeping to pull this bully's pants down. This bully has, like, banana boxer shorts. It's not very funny. In fact, this movie itself is not very funny at all. I, I chuckled once or twice, and I'll, I'll explain when those were. Uh, but he does that. He does, like, his, the, one of the kids' algebra homework. Um, yeah, not much happens. And then, like I said, like, the the sister is supposed to be watching the, the two kids because the mother's, like, a nurse. They're always a nurse in these movies. Uh, <laughs> but she ends up leaving to go to this, like, concert slash nightclub with her boyfriend. But then when she gets there, she sees her boyfriend kiss somebody, so she's upset. Um, and then Slappy smuggles himself in her backpack, even though he can seem to kind of teleport. And then, um, the boyfriend's, like, setting up for, like, some sort of Halloween play or Halloween dance or something. It's never really explained or followed up on. Uh, and he's on a ladder, and then Slappy just kind of comes to life and talks to him for a bit, and then uses his telepathy to unscrew it so that he falls and has to go to the hospital. Sure. And then, uh, the, the kid from It, his project is to make a mini, uh, tower of Nikola Tesla's and make it work for the science fair and also for a science class. And then Slappy, like, hardwires that so that it, like, blows up a hole in a wall, and it, I don't know, it's, it's all kind of bullshit. Anyway, the, the crux of the movie is basically that Slappy wants a family and specifically wants a mother, but he also wants to kind of create havoc. So he goes to the old Nikola Tesla tower to sort of use this to amplify his magic, his nondescript magic. Uh, to bring about a bunch of things to life. So here's kind of the main problem here. Um, when they first announced that they were doing a sequel to the first Goosebumps movie, all of the Goosebumps fans, at least the ones who interacted with myself on the channel, they wanted Horrorland. They wanted like uh, the, to do the Horrorland amusement park, or, or to bring uh, characters or creatures from the books that weren't in the first movie, and then, because there's a lot to kind of choose from in these, uh, this movie doesn't do any of that. What this movie does is uh, Slappy's magic kind of goes around, and all it does is it brings Halloween decorations to life. Uh, if first off, it starts off in this, like, hardware, this, like, Benny's type of hardware store. If you're not from New England, you might not know what Benny's is, but, like, a, 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 a local hardware store, maybe a small chain, but not, like, a Home Depot or anything. And it turns, and he, uh, Slappy does this in person, and he turns some Halloween decorations to life. So you get, you know, some, like, rubber rats and vampire stuff, and just, just cheesy Halloween decorations come to life. Um, and then Chris Parnell, what is he doing in this movie? Chris Parnell, uh, is kind of working at the store, also has a crush on the mother, uh, while this happens, and so Slappy takes a rubber mask and, like, latches it to his face, and I guess that's our haunted mask in the movie. Uh, it, it looks like the Haunted Mask from the Haunted Mask 2 cover, a little bit, but the, it turns the Chris Parnell character into sort of like an Igor, Igor character, uh, where just becomes Slappy's, like, assistant while doing this tower. But yeah, all Slappy does is, there's no, there's no other books, there's no other creatures escaping from the books. 
Uh, just maybe some of you can maybe say some of the creatures from the books are still in this by proxy, like um, the attack of the jack o' lanterns guys and stuff like that. Uh, and you see some other stuff, like the abominable snowman comes back from like the first movie, kind of. Um, but it's mostly just like just Halloween decorations that come to life. And all I could think about was this is a really shitty version of that scene in Ghostbusters 2 when um, the slime starts coming up and it starts, the, and all havoc breaks loose and it, like turns the woman's mink coat into like actual live minks and stuff. This, this entire movie's plot is the shitty version of that scene. So I'm watching this and I'm like, all right, it's kind of cute that like the kids like plastic pumpkin trays on Halloween night and the bags kind of all come to life and whatever, but I'd much rather just be watching Ghostbusters 2 on the big screen right now. <laughs> Um, the one chuckle I did get is there's these three jack-o'-lanterns on this, uh, staircase up to a porch on a front door, and one of the jack-o'-lanterns has, like, um, uneven eyes carved into it, and so they turn it into, like, this derpy pumpkin who's like, my name's Larry, happy Easter, and that, that got a chuckle out of me. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, it's just about Halloween decorations come to life, and... Th that idea could maybe work in a movie, that Halloween decorations come to life and all these chintzy decorations are now attacking people. Uh, like, I could see that happening on, like, a, a Ghostbusters 3, which we'll never get because we got the fucking remake, or reboot, uh, took place on, like, Halloween night or something. Um, or that, that was, like, something that might have happened on the real Ghostbusters cartoon back in the day. But it, it just isn't very funny here. Um... The movie comes across like it was shot at the last minute and kind of slapdash. Like, there's also not many creatures. There's, like, there's a few scenes where there's some creatures congregating on the front lawn of this guy, and you don't see that many of them. By the way, um, Ken Jeong, who I always find really fucking annoying in stuff, he seems like he's probably a nice guy, but he's really fucking annoying in movies. Uh, especially Hangover 3 was the worst in that. Um, but he's, like, this the neighbor who d he goes all out to decorate for Halloween, kind of like in movies where you see people go all out for Christmas and stuff. Uh, so you see it in, in his front lawn, and it's, it doesn't really work. And Ken Jeong doesn't do his, like, annoying voice thing that he does sometimes, but he's still... Uh, uh, there is, like, a giant spider made out of balloons. That's kind of cool. Um, but so the big movie is basically that uh, the two kids and the older sister are kind of going around about town. They, they get the book, and they can suck some of the, these creatures into a book, even though they're not creatures from the book. I don't know. Uh, so, and they want to, like, suck Slappy in there and stop the whole thing, and they're running about while Slappy is trying to cause havoc and kidnap the kid's mom because Slappy wants a mom. Because Slappy has mommy issues for being rejected by Daddy Arl Stein. And the, the entire second act is sort of a lot of kind of boring, unfunny hijinks. Um, I mean, you got the gummy bear thing, which is kind of just a rip-off of the gnome thing from the first movie, and you got a couple creatures that just aren't in the books, as far as I know, though I did stop reading the books after the my reviews of those went away. So, I don't know, maybe they're from some newer shit, and a couple of the books get name-checked, but it's... This isn't what we want. <laughs> like, if, if, if there was going to be a Goosebumps sequel, I wanted to see either creatures that weren't in the first movie or Horrorland or something like that. I don't want to see spirit Halloween decorations come to life that aren't from any of the fucking books. Um, so that really is all that happens. Um, and then the movie gets a little bit of a, of a boost in Act 3 because... Um, the kids call up the Arl Stein fan club, which is headed by Arl Stein using a pseudonym. Arl Stein, played by Jack Black. So it was really cool to see that Jack Black actually is in the movie as Arl Stein, because that would have been really fucking missing if he weren't, and I didn't think he was. So it was kind of a surprise, because this wasn't spoiled for me going in. Um, and Jack Black gets a couple funny moments, and watching the movie, I was thinking of, all right, the first movie's not great. Uh, I've had no desire to rewatch it. It certainly had its issues. Uh, but what kind of worked of it was Jack Black play, paying, uh, playing a, like, narcissistic, self-involved version of R.L. Stein, and that's, that humor, it was Jack Black's version of R.L. Stein that really made that movie work. You take Jack Black out of it, and it's just kind of a bunch of, like, not-so-good Sony animation come to life and some kids looking panicked, and it doesn't work as well. It would still work better in this movie. Uh, so Jack Black was sorely missing for the first two acts, but he was busy making other movies, I guess. So when he comes into it, uh, you get a, a couple more chuckles. 
Um, like, there's one thing, uh, Jack Black shows up in the town, and all the chaos is happening, he's like, oh my god, and then you see a red balloon fly, uh, float by, and Jack Black's like, I knew I wrote that, I came up with that first, and that made me chuckle, because, because supposedly this haunted Halloween manuscript was written before it in, like, the 1970s or something. Uh, so that made me chuckle. And then, uh, the climax happens... And, like, uh, Slappy's defeated, all the creatures are sucked into the book through... There's, there's like, a switcheroo that the movie doesn't even try to not telegraph ahead of time, and, and all this stuff. It's, it's kind of a boring finale. Um, and then it's, like, Jack Black is like comes up with a typewriter, and he's making all demands, like, I'll fix this and ever. And that was sort of funny, is that Arl Stein comes in, and everything's already been solved without him. I thought that was a, a really funny thing, and that was a good way to to take it off uh, from the first movie of him being narcissistic. And it just reminded me of that episode of The Simpsons, uh, the monorail episode, where Leonard Nimoy's there, and Leonard Nimoy's like, my work here is done. He goes like, but you haven't done anything. Leonard Nimoy's like, didn't I? And this is kind of like that version of that. Not as funny as when that was done, but it was, it was still pretty cool. And then you got a little coda at the end where Slappy comes back and like sucks Jack Black's Arl Stein into a book. So I guess there's kind of a setup for Goosebumps 3 there if this one makes enough money. Uh, but honestly, this movie's not very good, and if, if you're going to have a bad Goosebumps movie, I want it to be bad the way that the Goosebumps books are, because the Goosebumps books aren't good. Sorry, Goosebumps fans, they're not good. Uh, so I was expecting it to be, like, uh, very cheesy and over-the-top and nonsensical if it's going to be, like, the books and bad. This one's just kind of lazy and boring. This is... This is, a lot of it's kind of the first movie over again, but not as good, which is kind of what you think of in a sequel. It's just the same thing put in a microwave. Um, it doesn't deliver any of the stuff we want. It doesn't, it doesn't give us the creatures from the books, really, and it doesn't give us Horrorland. It just gives us generic Halloween things. Uh, the characters are pretty bland. The older sister, fine, she kind of works, but the two kids are interchangeable. One's white and one's black, and one like science. There's not much to differentiate them. Uh, they play Rocket League, I guess, and mention Bitcoin, but otherwise, yeah. Um, you get the same bullies on bikes. It's, it's, uh, it's, the movie just doesn't, it's, at the end of the day, the creatures aren't cool enough, and there's not enough monster action, and the humor isn't very funny, and Slappy doesn't seem to be Slappy for that first act when he's around. Um, the movie just doesn't work. And when Jack Black comes in, that almost hurts the movie because you realize how much the movie's not working when he comes in and, and he brings an energy that the rest of the movie doesn't have and he's underutilized in it. Um, and, but he does deliver a couple laughs, but it's... The movie just... It's just not funny enough. It's not entertaining enough or spooky enough. or anything. It, it just doesn't work. And that's the end of the day. It's, it's not like... It's not so bad it's good, like some of the cheesier um, Goosebumps books. Like, it's not as bad as, like, Five Master Doctor Scream ghost-written Goosebumps either, but it's really not a, it's not a good movie. It, it's, it's kind of boring, actually, and that's kind of the worst thing. Aside from the, the few chuckles I got out of it, and a couple interesting, like, creature moments uh, when the stuff starts first coming to life, it's and then the derpy pumpkin. It just it's boring. It doesn't work. It's lame. It's fucking lame, and that's kind of sad. Uh, one thing I will note: the real life Arl Stein has a cameo in the movie as like a school principal. So that was cool because I don't remember him having. Oh, he he does cameo. He's he's um he's uh, the janitor in the first movie. That's right. Um, but if the first movie and the first movie hasn't aged well in my memory, um, I. I felt like I, I felt like it was a B minus when I went to see it. It's maybe closer to C plus in my memory. Uh, this movie is more like a C minus. It's it's not a terrible movie. Maybe kids will like it, uh, but it's it's just it's forgettable. It's lame. It's not what we want. So it, it feels like. Sony decided at the last minute that, hey, the first Goosebumps movie made enough of a profit, we'll make this, we'll toss it on into theaters, and then every Halloween we'll sell $5 DVDs of this at Target and we'll play it on the Disney Channel or, or the Family Channel or whatever it's called now. Because uh, <laughs> this kind of feels like a Disney Channel TV movie, really. Or like, uh, you know, the, 
what is it, the, the Disney Friday night movie or, or whatever that they used to have, a uh, Disney Saturday night movie on ABC when I was growing up. It kind of feels like one of those movies. It's, it's chintzy. Uh, if they do, but if it is successful and they do make another one of these, I would hope they either do Horrorland or they actually... I'd kind of want Goosebumps to just kind of get away from this. Like maybe, maybe you have Jack Black as Arl Stein in this book. And, and it's sort of like that episode of the real Ghostbusters cartoon where Slimer was stuck in the containment unit. Or maybe you, inside the book is more creatures and he has to fight his way out. And he has, like, creature friends or something. There's a uh, sort of like a, when Fred Savage goes to the monster land and little monsters or something. There's, there's things you can do with that premise, assuming Jack Black can come back for a full fucking movie instead of, you know, what's sort of an extended cameo. Uh... But otherwise, let, let's just let this die. Hey, Carl. Because, look, the Goosebumps books aren't good. The Goosebumps TV show has not aged well. And, I don't know. I mean, they're making an Are You Afraid of the Dark movie. Maybe, maybe that'll turn out well. Because, I don't know. But Haunted Halloween, no. Sony, Sony did better.